Hey, it's Dr. Amanda with Straight Smile Solutions, straightsmilesolutions.com. And today we're going to be talking about wire sequence. We're going to be talking about figure eights. We're going to be talking about steel ties. We're going to be talking about what to use as your first wire, how to tell if you can progress to the next wire. And I actually have videos on all of this already. Each of these components that I mentioned has its own specific video. So if you go to my Straight Smile Solutions um, YouTube site and you put in like wire sequence or put in figure eight or steel tie or SST um, or just wires in general um, you will see an individual video that will kind of dig more into depth into each of these topics so this video is just gonna be a very high-level overview another great resource that you can jump on would be our digital education course. You can access that at straightsmilesolutions.com. Go to digital education, our straight wire course. We have a lot of resources there. There is a fee for that course. Um, another resource that you can use, which is cheaper, um, and the YouTube videos is free. Another fr oh, free resource would be to go to letter G, letter P, webinar.com. That's gpwebinar.com. And we have a lot of archive webinars there with a lot of free resources. And lastly, another resource, which is very affordable, it's between $9 and $50, depending on if you have a Kindle or if you like paperback, is our textbook or our book. Um, again, if you go to straightsmilesolutions.com, there's a banner at the top, which takes you to our book. And there's a, I mean, for that price, there's so much nuggets in that book that you could definitely use. So, so many nuggets. So anyways, let's get back to our high level overview on wire sequencing, steel ties, figure eights, etc. So let's look at this case here. And this is not even my case. This is just a stock photo. Sometimes I love using stock photos because I can just purchase them. I have a subscription and I see all kinds of things that I can talk about and have to get releases or anything like that. So it's just easier. But all in all, the bracket placement is pretty decent here. There's def definitely some things I think they did wrong here that I would do differently. I'm not gonna say they're wrong. It's just different than I would do. But um, let's see if you can point out some of the mistakes. So bracket placement is decent, all in all. Um, clearly, either they knew how to put on their brackets or they use indirect bonding. And again, if you are a newbie dentist who is not an orthodontist or you're not going to orthodontic residency, just use indirect bonding. Don't be cheap, okay? You can get this for so cheap now. <laughs> really high quality 022 slot, MBT brackets, a variety of different companies do it. Of course, I have my favorites. The one I like to use is about $300 to $350 for 3M Unitech Victory Series MBT brackets, top of the line metal brackets, not cheap ones. There's a lot of really, really cheap brackets that are out there on the market. They will not express the way they're supposed to. It will not express torque. You will not get the right outcomes. They'll get bent, they'll get, oh uh, no. Don't go cheap. So if you want that referral, this is a word of mouth situation only. Originally they were in beta, but now they're not, but they just don't spend money on marketing because they try to leave their prices low for you. So if you want, and they only take certain types of doctors. So I kind of vet the doctors and I send them because I just love working with them. So they've asked me to vet the doctors. So contact me and if I think you're a good fit, I will send you to my resource for a really great indirect bonding. But lots of different good companies out there too. A lot of other ones are a lot more expensive, but they'll still work. Um, so anyways, mistakes that are made here. So obviously I always say first wire should be the biggest possible wire that you can fully put in and engage into the patient. So if you look here, I'd look at this. It really depends on the patient. I might use 14. I might use 12. I don't use 12 very often. Um, usually 14 is my, or 16 is my go-to wire. It really depends on the patient. If the patient is super high maintenance, a whiner, a complainer, then I'd probably go with 12. You know, I can just kind of tell by their personality, how high strung they are, how much they complain, how much they're like moaning and groaning over little things that shouldn't hurt at all. Then I'm going to use the lightest possible wire, which would be a 12. Um, if I think they're a little more tough, um, and they're really excited to get going, then I'd use a 14 here. Um, but again, it's the, you can always go lighter, right? It's not a problem. What's the worst thing that's going to happen? Maybe it's going to take a few more weeks, but you know, patient will be a little more comfortable. So, um, personal choice, but yeah, I mean, first thing I see here is they didn't fully engage this tooth or this tooth. Well, actually they figure eighted them. I think it's hard to tell. They only have this one thing. So maybe they did fully engage it. But definitely you want to make sure that the wire is fully in the slot. So the figure eight, 
and you can watch my video on figure eight will really help it get in slot it just holds it in tighter you can do figure eight on everything if you want and there's nothing wrong with that um but it just takes more time right to put on and take off but a figure eight stays tighter and it'll fully slap it or you can do a stainless steel tie or a ligature tie again this is technique sensitive if you don't do it right you can break a bracket with those so i kind of like figure eights better but you can break a bracket with figure eight too so um yeah it would really depend on whether or not this was fully rotated or fully engaged fully in the slot from even that this kind of right angle i'm guessing it's probably not if it wasn't then what i might do is i might put a button on the lingual aspect and do a counter rotation um, but i'd have to see the picture to show you how to do that but otherwise the bracket placement is excellent they fully engage this one this was a tricky one i think i don't know if this is fully engaged you'd have to see if it wasn't then maybe i'd use a lighter wire or um, a ligature fork would help um, but they did a good job the other thing that i probably would have done different is i probably would have put some temporary posterior bite bumps on here just because i think this is going to get locked in um, it might not depends on how much of a clencher the patient is um, but certainly if you didn't see it jump after one visit I would definitely put some bite bumps on just to help open the occlusion so that this jumps forward and once it jumps forward and this comes back then you could just zig those off you, you don't want to leave posterior bite bumps on for too long because you'll get intrusion of those teeth over time and then you're gonna have to deal with bringing those teeth back up. And one of the biggest mistakes I see is that people slap those things on all the time, even in deep bite paces, you're actually making your deep bite worse by putting those on. And of course you're getting uneven step in the occlusion. So they're not my preference. Anytime I do a posterior bite bump, it is a temporary thing only. I'm gonna put a big alert on the chart to say check it every visit and then reduce it every visit to as much as I can and they need to be off within two to three months. If they're not, then you need to change directions and do something else to address that issue. And there's all the types of different types of other techniques you can use. But I mean, 90 day max on posterior bite bumps and too often doctors forget they put them on, which is why you should definitely watch my posterior bite bump video. Again, you can search for these. If you can't find them in my YouTube, just email me at info at streetsmilesolutions.com or message me through my website and I will personally send that video to you. I know where all my videos are. It's very easy. You can find it in one second and I will send it to you because you want to make your posterior bite bumps colored. You don't want to have them tooth colored because you'll forget they're on there and they can trap decay and other issues. And you want it to be like glaringly obvious that there's posterior bite bumps on at every visit. So you make sure to remind yourself to take it off fully. All right, hopefully this was helpful. Thanks so much.